Okay, we're just going to talk some more about Boeing. Uh, I've got more things to say. This is sort of turning into the third episode about Boeing. Uh, we'll take it. We'll just take it a little bit further. Uh, we talked before about the bow being a spring. We also mentioned the fact that the hair is also a spring. So what we've got when we have the bow is a double-sided spring. We use this to our advantage, especially on the bass. Um, if, I, if I just do some... They seem legato, but they're not exactly. If I played completely legato, it's a very uncharacteristic bass note. Most bass notes are bum, 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 a ba and a m. Mm. So it doesn't matter the note value. We fill the note value up with m, mm, but the ba remains the beginning of the note. It's what we're expecting to hear, especially in an orchestra, because you can punctuate the bass right through the orchestra and if we sustain at the same volume exactly, it clouds up the orchestral texture. So the usual bass note is this. I'm using my lower arm and wrist. So let, let's talk about that a little bit. If I, if I bow without moving my arm, that is, uh, just connected at the shoulder without using these parts of my arm. I will go in a semicircle. So I have to cut the bottom off the semicircle. The place where I cannot be shorter is here. I've got, that's my full length of my arm here. So really what I've got to do now is cut the bottom off the semicircle. I've only got two ways to do that. I've got my wrist and my, my elbow wrist and forearm. That's really the motion of bowing in a nutshell, down and up. So if I start here, which is, that's the, in fact, that's the best place to check my hand position. We use this hand position with these two fingers slightly bent because if I didn't, I couldn't comfortably reach the point of the bow. That's what those two fingers are. But also it makes quite a firm hook. Bottasini talks about that in his method book. Uh, quite a firm hook on the, on the bow. So what I have to do is increasingly move my wrist and forearm as much as I have to to complete the bowing stroke. I'm not mentioning moving the fingers because the fingers have got very important jobs to do, but not necessarily in the bowing stroke itself. The fingers talk to the bow with various messages, and I'll talk a bit about that more later. But for now, so if I'm doing a whole bow, I'll use my whole arm, my arm from the shoulder, my lower arm, and my wrist. If the bows are shorter, I don't need my upper arm, so I can just use my lower arm. It's better because I don't have to move so many muscles. I can leave this to weight. Basically, the upper arm is used for weight and string crossing. So, and this is the bowing department. This is message department. This is the bowing department. This is the weight and string crossing department because I've got the weight of my arm on the base, and I can go... with my upper arm. That means that I'm not interfering with the bowing stroke, which is, I think, very good. So I've got bowing, string crossing. What I want to do now in most bass notes is depress the bow using my thumb and first finger and let go. That makes a spring. A note will jump out. 
as I said before, it doesn't matter if it's that long or if it's it's the same, it's just the same. So I'm thinking thinking down bow and up bow. In most languages, in fact, it you say down bow and up bow because it is down and it's up. When I'm at the point of the bow, of course, I'm using, as we said in previous things, I'm using a lot of thumb and first finger. Here I can think more of lifting. We'll use the natural weight of the bow to our advantage in most orchestral bowing because this is heavier than that. So I can use this to my advantage. For example, if I have... Now, what I would call staccato bowing. I mean, there's lots of different names for bowings, mostly in French or Italian. And I mean, you can't begin to put names or words on all the bowings you have to invent almost every day as a musician. You know, the, the, this is your expression. So, I mean, there, you know, there's, there, there's not just six bowings, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's, there's hundreds of bowings. And you have to invent the one that makes what you want to do as a musician. So now I'm going to, uh, if, if I make my attack and let the bow go, but leave the bow on the string and a little bit of oomph on the string, tension or power, or whatever. If I leave it on the string, when I stop the bow, the note will stop. But the next note's already produced. This is about staccato bowing. So if I go, the notes stop. And, but also, if I just move my arm without doing anything, the next note is produced already. I need more bow on the thin upper string than I need on the big fat bottom string. This is another thing that deserves to be mentioned because I need more bow. So, so I'm not going to use to make the notes sound even. Okay, and also I need a little more of sounds like spiccato but it isn't it's actually staccato i'm leaving the bow on this that's on the string if i want to come off the string i have to take a totally different way of making the attack so this is an attack is press and re let go I can smoothen it out. If I want to play off the string, something has to make the spring work. I can't say, oh, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> something, has, something else has to happen. Because the head of the bow is basically heavier than the hair, if I throw the head of the bow towards the string, the bow will flex, and my note's produced. I often use the analogy of a fly, like if there's a fly on your string. I know this isn't very uh, whatever, but um, if there's a fly there, and I do a down swat.
using my lower arm and wrist because I don't need all my upper arm, so of course I don't use it. I can do an up swat, upwards. If I put the two together, I've got an uncontrolled, very high spiccato, and I can bring it down. I can play spiccato if I've got a proper spiccato. Some, some, one teacher told me once, he said, well, there's one place the bow likes to jump, so just play spiccato there. <sighs> we can't be so limited, <laughs> I'm afraid, as musicians, because what if we get a Rossini overture? We have to do spiccato here. What if we have some very percussive, loud playing to do? I need to play here. I can play in the middle. So, I mean, there's different parts of the bow can be used for different, different things that I need to do. Uh, if I do hammer stroke, which they call martellato or hammer stroke or ball, what it, ball, I don't know what it is, balzato, hammering at the frog, that's a very useful bowing, especially on the bass. And, you know, if I'm hammering, I was So I'm thinking of grab and pull. I, somebody said once, how would you describe bowing in two words? I said grab and pull. You grab and pull. Then the bass is singing, the notes are coming out, what I would like to hear. I need something, a, a real hammer stroke notes. I can, I can just do, I can take this hammer stroke. So I'm taking the down bow part of the hammer stroke That's very useful tool, that one. Uh, I hope this has given some ideas more about bowing, uh, and uh, we'll do some more later on. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you could put them in the comment sections below.